Hi, this is Dorothy Fawn. I'm the voice of Meryl Strife from Trigun, Conan from Naruto, and Mercedes from Fire Emblem Three Houses. And you are listening to Podcast Across Worlds, Hawaii's number one podcast for anime and manga. Aloha, everyone. This is Lihua Superfina, host of Hawaii's number one podcast for anime and manga, Podcast Across Worlds. And this is Mikhail Casanova, your co host. We like to read a lot of manga, watch a lot of anime, and talk about it for hours. So today's episode is going to be a little bit different because I don't know if this technically qualifies as an anime or it is not technically a manga either, but it is comics and anime does mean comics. So uh, today we're going to be talking about Invincible. I believe that was the season finale that we saw for season two. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, that show is good. It's really good. Like, if you haven't watched it on a scale of 1 to 10, it is a uh, 10 out of 10. It's but a 15. It's, it's a 15, <laughs> yes. I'm going to go with that. Yes, yes. It's a 15. It's just so good because we went off from watching the Marvel movies to the boys to invincible okay so we got to give a little you know that, that it's not that quite back to back literally the last marvel movie i believe we watched was 2019 was the end game i think that was it and then we were like yeah we're superheroed out or you may have kept watching i think you watched wandavision right i didn't even watch that one you didn't? Oh, okay. No. Oh, I was watching Loki. Oh, yeah. She was watching Loki. So, we pretty much got to a point where, like, we were just done um, watching super... Because we were, you know, like, we got superheroed out. And it just got to a point where it's just too much, you know, just... Where is it going? And, and now you're seeing people sick of the MCU. So then, you know... We saw the boys like advertisements for it on Amazon for years, and you know I know people talked about the boys, and then we just got around to watching. We did simultaneously watch the boys and Invincible. That's true. And we started leaning way more towards Invincible because the boys season one was phenomenal, season two sucked. We didn't even bother with season three, and I think they're working on season four. We just like, yeah, we're, we tapped out of season one. But Invincible, you know, like we looked at the end from what we saw, because it would promote on, on Amazon, because it's Amazon Prime Original, right? So it would promote on Amazon, and we would look at it, but all it would see is you would see the character Invincible and the words Invincible. There's really nothing to script to it, so we didn't think anything of it. Mm-hmm. But every time we scroll through Amazon Prime or we were on Amazon shopping, it kept popping up and it was always super highly rated. And I want to give a shout out to my, my friend uh, Callum, uh, aka History Behind a Warrior, because he was just, he, like, I remember having a DM with him and I was like, yeah, I'm looking for something to watch. He's like, bro, go watch the boys and make sure you go watch Inv- Invincible. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. And this is around the time I think Mortal Kombat 1 was like teasing is gonna have peacemaker omni man and uh uh homelander oh that's right yeah so it's like you know 20 2023 so we finally just got around to watching it and you know it's like the animation style is pretty much what we grew up with with uh the dc anime universe with like batman superman it's, it's that art style mm-hmm. but the storytelling how it goes zero to 100 real quick with a gratuitous violence but it's it's so good i'm gonna shut up at this point because i've been rambling go ahead you, you got the floor i mentioned the boys because the boys portray superheroes in a realistic way for example we got tired of the heroes being good guys meaning they always kept the villains alive and such Mm -hmm. and the boys just showed okay this is what happens when we as people lose control we get emotional we become mentally unstable we can't control ourselves 
And so it showed the flaws of heroes that they actually kill people. Yes. And they are not、Saints. moral. They don't really have really good morals or ethics. Yeah. And, and when you look at like Marvel and DC, I mean, they do have characters that run that gray line or can. Be the anti-hero, but they never really go that far. At least not in anime sense. If you watch, read the comics, and yeah, they, some of them do, like the Punisher and such. But this, like, if you're someone who watched like original 1992 Batman, you know, cartoon and the, you know, all the superhero animated stuff, the good guys maybe skirted morality. The line of morality, but they were always good.、Mm-hmm. Whereas this one is like, no, they're flawed, and, and it, some of them are super messed up. Yeah, and it puts it like front and center. And so, it was kind of extreme for me. I don't know about you, Mikael. So when we got to Invincible, it was in the middle. Yes, yes, and. When it got to those graphic parts, those gory parts where people actually died and there's like blood splatter, I could handle it with Invincible because it was animated. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like when we were watching it with、uh, the boys, it was it, it got it, it went pretty far. Yeah. But like with with、uh, Invincible, the thing is, it catches you off guard. When it goes to the gratuitous violence,、mm-hmm. because you'll have like it, it breaks the fourth wall repeatedly, especially with Alan, who's one of the alien characters.、Mm-hmm. Like he constantly, <laughs> he constantly breaks the fourth wall. But like it, you know, it 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 does it in the sense of like it knows you're watching the show, and then the characters are self aware themselves,、mm. and so it's like when they get into a situation that. You typically would see a superhero in in other, you know,、uh, mediums. They ask the same questions or say the things that you and I or people like in real life would actually have a realistic response to. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> so. So what I like about Invincible, I just want to talk about the main character Mark. Go for it. Where he was a teenage boy who. Gets his powers, and you see his journey. Like he wants to be a hero, like his father. His father was Omni Man, who was an alien, and was like the Superman of this world.、Mm-hmm. He's perfect. He's the guy that everyone relies on. He's the go-to guy if the front. Line superheroes don't succeed, and he's the one that comes in to save the day. Yeah. So Mark has looked up to this man, and has always wanted to be like him. And then he finds out that his dad is not what he thought. Yeah. His dad was quote evil quote, and then he kind of has this identity crisis. He's like, I wanted to be like my dad. Am I like my dad? What do I do? And then he comes terms with himself. Then reality hit him. He's on Earth. He's half human. He's going to college. He has a girlfriend who knows that he's a superhero on the side, which is really refreshing. Because I'm gonna mention Spider Man. I got really annoyed with him hiding his identity and always having relationship problems because. He always has to ditch his date to save the day. So with、yeah. Mark, it was really refreshing to see him being open in his relationship and his girlfriend being understanding. Well, he was lying at one point, and then she she just was no nonsense and just he's like, okay, let jigs up, let me go ahead and <laughs> just <laughs> let me just be honest. Yeah, yeah. Then on the flip side, although. She knows what he does. She has like this. What do I do as a superhero's girlfriend?、Mm-hmm. I want to be selfish and tell him stay with me. But on the other side, I know he's there to save people. Yeah. And 
Mark also has like this crisis where he's, I want to be a good boyfriend, but I also want to save the people. So they're both concerned about the same things. However, they didn't know how to address it until the girlfriend reached her limit when she almost died. Yeah. So so basically, Mark is a um, he's what's called a Viltrumite. And think of the Kryptonians. Literally, it's, you know, Omni-Man is Superman gone bad. And we've seen, like, the what if of Superman going bad. Right, and basically, right. this is that. But, um, yeah, so Mark's girlfriend almost died. And, you know, you think in most other mediums of superhero fiction... You know, they save the girl. She stays with him mm-hmm. regardless. Mm-hmm. Think Lois Lane to Clark Kent. Mm-hmm. You know, as an example. And or she t- always gets in trouble. Right. Or Chi Chi to Goku and Dragon Ball. Mm-hmm. Like something, you know, like, or uh, Kagome and, and Inuyasha. Like, think of it like that. But then, the where Invincible is different, again fourth wall breaking but also very realistic it showed to the girl you could die like that yes and it's like being with him is a threat to your chances of survival yes and like her response even if it was like you know I, i've seen some red threats people like oh she was selfish and you know it's about her she think about her and not him but I mean, really, she could have died like that. That's a very... I mean, look. Self-preservation is a very real thing. You're right? It should be an instinct. It, it, <laughs> Everybody should instinctly want to self-preserve themselves. Exactly. So, like, this is a situation where it's like she nearly died. She realized the fragility of her life. And especially... Being with someone who is extraordinary or, or superhuman, it really showcased the dynamic of you're never going to have that normal relationship. Mm-hmm. And like it goes further as we go along where it's like, yeah, he's a college student and, you know, he wanted to go and do this, this and that. But then when the reality of him being a superhuman or a superhero or Viltrum might really... Is that he's going to? Because they, you know, they wouldn't showcase that. Also, again, that he's going to outlive nearly everyone on the planet. So, it, mm-hmm. You know, so like, if you're going to do that, then like, why? You know, is it even fair to be in a relationship with someone who is like literally a flash in the plant in the pan of your existence? Mm-hmm. Is it even realistic or, you know, what good does it do to go to school and get an education, get a degree, get a job and work that job when you are a superhuman being? Like, it, it just doesn't it doesn't make sense. And the show is not going to BS you into thinking, oh, yeah, it makes sense because it doesn't make sense. And it's like, all right. And so you get to see Mark really go through it like we don't I, I don't know if we're gonna really spoil things but like we're spoiling spoil we're already talking about season eight okay season two season eight uh, I'm like, damn. Season two, <laughs> she, she went to a whole ep- different dimension season two episode eight <laughs> okay so you know he kills this guy who uh i think uh Ar- was it argan langs or levy or whatever whatever the guy's name he he dimension hops and so he ends up you know killing him and that's the first person that he's killed and so he's dealing with that dealing with the the relationship thing still dealing with the fact is he's got a younger half sibling from uh uh, uh, a thraxon which is like ant people and his dad's whole thing and then like he's dealing with a lot and has had zero time to sit and process this, plus the impending doom of Earth if he doesn't get stronger to protect it against the Viltrumite army. So he's dealing with a whole lot, and 
his response to everything is so realistic. It's like, mm-hmm. man, I I can't really be worrying about school and a job in day to day life. So let's give some backstory about his school thing. Okay. So he was taken away to space and he was gone for months. Yeah. According to Earth time. That means when he was in college, he missed months of classes. Like he was going to be suspended, maybe expelled. And he wanted to stay in college because that's a normal human thing to do. That's something everyone he knows does. Mm -hmm. He wanted to stay with his girlfriend. He wanted to stay with his friends. So he talked to the dean, wanted to stay in school. Okay, make that commitment. Then all of a sudden, Armstrong Levy. Whatever. Whatever his name is. Dimension Hopper, yeah. Dimension Hopper. He comes into the picture, keeps throwing him in different dimensions, which has different time speed. So we don't know how long he's been talking, thinking about all this stuff. And then at the same time, his mom is in danger. His younger brother is in danger. And when he finally comes back, after all that happening, he's like, School is not important. Yeah. And the other thing, too, that was interesting about it, um, because it it deals with the the Dimension Hopper guy completely opened a whole nother parallel and, you know, no pun intended, to the world of Invincible because you got to see um, the fact that in every other dimension, Mark is a villain. Mm-hmm. He's a villain who ruthlessly kills people with, along with his dad, or sometimes by himself. But in the dimension that he's from, that we're watching in the show, he's a good guy, and he tries to keep everyone alive. Right, and so the interesting thing about that is the guy who dimension hops was never a bad guy he was always trying to like protect you know humanity from mark Mm -hmm. but then the and the irony of it is done by his uh mark's mother she says it to the dimension hopper guy that you know in this one dimension mark's a good guy and you're the villain and that's such an allegory to like be the old saying of be careful of fighting monsters lest you become one Mm -hmm. because he became the very thing he hated and it was such a fourth wall break that the guy couldn't he couldn't handle that reality no he was actually kind of denying it yeah he couldn't handle the truth no and it's just it's crazy like this show and I had lost track of my original point of this, but this show, and the reason we, you know, maybe not remembering every character's name, because who can really do that unless you're like super immersed in the shows? Or, I'm sorry, you have to watch these episodes over and over to remember all their names. You do, because the thing is, okay, so, okay, now touching on that, there's so many layers to Invincible. It introduces one thing. And then sets up another, and then you're looking at the new thing it's setting up, and then something you would have seen in an episode or three, four episodes, or even a season ago, gets brought back. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's so well layered that there's never a moment of downtime. And, And to give context, we watched The Witcher. And we loved The Witcher season one, Mm -hmm. season two, Mm -hmm. season three Mm -hmm. was good. And then you had those episodes with Siri where nothing was happening and my ass was falling asleep. (laughs) And I felt I'm like, I went to sleep, woke up. Oh, we still here. It was like watching Lord of the Rings. I'm sorry if I offended anyone with that. But I got, you know, the build up to that battle. I fell asleep and woke up. Man, we still here. We ain't go nowhere. All right. Wake me up when we leave. So. Anyway, um, there's never a moment in Invincible the show, and I can't speak to the comment because I haven't really dived too deep into it, but I will because, it, I mean, we had to wait what, six months for new episodes for a, for a half season. But um, there's never a moment where nothing matters. 
Chance. Or is this bad pacing? Even if they shift to another character, it still ropes back into the main overarching plot. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, you don't know where the plot's going because there's so many different players, mm -hmm. uh, key locations, and just overarching narratives that it's like, we eat and it's all you can eat buffet and it's all going down in our stomach. <laughs> so, man. So I want to go back to what we were talking about before, how Mark had this realization that school didn't matter. Mm -hmm. And the reason I want to go back to that is because it's something that I always wondered whenever I watched Marvel or DC shows mm -hmm. where like the heroes have a double life. They have the regular life and the superhero life. And the amount of times Mark had to leave his dates to be a superhero my thoughts were how are you gonna have a regular job you're gonna have to leave in the middle of your shift yeah i didn't even think about that yeah so when mark <laughs> was talking to his mom saying i'm gonna quit school i'm gonna quit college and the mom's like no 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 college is so good you know it's not just for the job it's for and mark's like i need to work on myself yeah i have the strength I'm a superhero, and yet I lost control. And mind you, Mark kind of had a mental breakdown. Yeah. Like, I was kind of on suspense thinking that he's going to turn into a villain. Because he snapped. And so, he's like, I can't worry about school, classes, grades, graduating, getting a job. I'm already stressed out about saving people not killing people not losing control like i need to work on myself and so i was thinking that's so real yeah i mean y yeah you don't really think about it because most of the stories like you think of like spider-man and him working for the was it not the daily bugle but um i forgot what my goodness this is to me different I he was a photographer was a for a newspaper. For, yeah, I, I can't, I can't even think of the name of it. I think it's a Daily Bugle, but I could be wrong. I think Daily Planet was Superman. Superman, so maybe the Daily. I don't know. But that was another good um, example. Superman. He was a journalist, and somehow in the middle of his shift, he could go Superman. Not right? realistic. <laughs> like Lois was getting fed up with him before she knew who he was right and, and i'm just thinking about it because in the realistic sense i remember when i was working in it man i take a bathroom break for like five minutes to go take a dump and then i got people mad at me because oh how come you was gone so long i can't imagine having an actual job being a superhero and then taking out like i gotta go save the world i gotta go to the other side of the planet mm -hmm. so uh yeah i'll be back <laughs> I don't know how long right you right. know like realistically how do you manage that and the show invincible really deals with that and another completely unrelated but when he <laughs> dimension hopped you had the reference to spider-man they didn't full they 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 did as, as much as they could without getting sued but then he straight up met batman he's like you're a bat and you're a man. A man who dresses like a bat. <laughs> and then you're going with the name Batman. No, he didn't even no, say Batman. No, he didn't even say the name. And that's your name? That's your name? Like, it's so it's lazy. Kinda, it's kind of lazy. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, you know, I'm just like, a lot of us kind of think about that, too. It's like, yeah, that's kind of lazy. <laughs> you know, Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, <laughs> Iron Man, like, Wonder Woman. <laughs> Like kind of unoriginal, don't you think? <laughs> but <laughs> right, it's just, it's just funny. Like it, it really touched on that. But like realistically, though, it's like he can't really maintain that double life, and he came to that realization. I can't do this. I'm here. This is my abilities. I need to lean into it, but also not let it consume me because it consumed him in his rage. 
you know, him not realizing how strong he is mm-hmm. because the guy is like, oh, they augmented me. They made me stronger. And he's he's like, don't hold back. And so he didn't. And he he tore him a new one, literally through his brain and killed him. And then his whole thing is like, I thought you were going to be stronger. Right. And like he realized through that, which, you know, that that's literally a turning point in his character arc. You need to control yourself. Mm -hmm. You can't let these fits of rage because your fit of rage literally kills somebody. Granted, they broke your mom's arm, threatened to kill her, threatened to kill your uh, uh, younger brother. Younger brother. You know, they they were about to do all that nonsense. But at the end, he still got a good heart. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I kind of want to have an input there. Go for it. It seems like his dad, Nolan, was trying to prep him for this. Yeah. Because he was so hard on Mark when he was training him with his Giltramite abilities. Yeah. And then at the end of season two, Nolan was like, what do you think all this was for? I was trying to prep you for this. In the season one. Yeah. Yeah. In the season one, he... Both Nolan and Mark were fighting, and Nolan was like, I told you about the Viltrumites. I trained you with your powers. This is what we're going to do. We're going to take over this planet because we are going to outlive the Earthlings. Yeah. We're going to outlive them. And, you know, you shouldn't care about them. Then... In the end of season two, that's where Mark kind of understands what Nolan was talking about. Because Mark went through those other dimensions where time went by faster. Mm -hmm. And then he saw the older versions of the Guardians. And so Mark is kind of realizing, hey, I am different. I am going to outlive these people yeah i am strong this guy who i thought was stronger than me i ended up killing him with these abilities that i was supposedly mastered but didn't so it seems like he's coming to a realization that like i'm more viltrumite than i realize yeah and it's Kind of, I'm almost wondering in those other dimensions where his, those versions of him turn bad, that's where they embrace their Viltrumite self. Well, if we go with um, after he killed a guy and, and then his team found him and it had been 20 years, if they hadn't got to him, he was going to just fully... Well, he would have probably went crazy and just... Because they basically stopped him from losing it. Right. But we don't even know how long he was there right. talking to himself. Yeah, so in that scene before he got saved by the Guardians, he was literally talking to himself, telling himself, he made me do it. He was going to kill my family. He wouldn't stop. I didn't mean to kill him. It was an accident. And then slowly he started to hold himself accountable. Yeah. That he did kill him. And that's where I was like, oh no, is he going to flip? Oh no. Yeah, because he's, he's holding himself accountable, but then he also is justifying it. Yeah. And it's like that fine line between going full board evil was there. And he was just about to further break. And if they hadn't got there when they did... It wouldn't have been good. Um, but even still, when he got back to his own dimension, he was not um, accepting what happened. He didn't want to really talk to anybody. Regardless of the fact he saved his mother and brother, he still could not come to grips with the fact he killed somebody. Right, because I believe that was his first time actually killing someone yeah. not by accident like he actually killed them yeah and then i'm wondering if this is kind of going to be 
the turning point that he needed to fight against the Viltrumites. Because if you remember when he first fought them on Thrax, that planet with the Thraxans, yeah. no one was telling him, you need to... Stop holding back. Yeah, stop holding back. You need to fight like a Viltrumite. Like, you need to fight your, like you're going to kill. And Mark was getting his butt whooped, yo. Left and right. And I was getting frustrated with him. I was like, man, stop holding back. And so at the end of season two, I was thinking, okay, now he knows what it's like to intentionally kill someone. Yeah. And especially because, I mean, the overarching overarching narrative is that there's going to be the Viltrumite invasion of Earth. And for those of you who need context of this, think of... Game of Thrones, where they kept saying, winter is coming. Mm -hmm. And this is basically like the same thing. It's not probably going to be for several seasons, but when it comes, it's like, yo, they've been setting this up from season one. It's coming. <laughs> you know? And he's got to be ready for it. And that's, that's the thing is like, it, it, everything he's doing needs to prep him for that he's got to be serious but i feel like i'm i'm kind of wondering where they're going to go with his character arc because yeah he's going to get his abilities he, like he's going to better himself with his abilities but then is he going to continue to second guess himself or is he going to get to a point where he's going to become numb and desensitized to it mm. like He's a character right now at this point that could go either way. And I feel like he might go too far in one direction of the pendulum swing. And I think with the redemption arc that they're given to Nolan, his father, he's going to have to be the one to like bring him back. Mm-hmm. And they kind of gave a sneak peek at the end of episode 8 where he says I miss my wife after calling her a plaything yeah or pet that's what he called her a pet a pet yes yeah, a pet so it's going to be interesting how that's going to come out if he does return to earth that whole dynamic because Mark's mom Debbie ooh, whew, she was broken yeah and now she's kind of quasi going on dates with this guy yeah so that's going to be very very interesting um yeah i mean if you haven't watched invincible if you've got amazon i mean at this point who doesn't have amazon prime we all want that two-day ship and even though hawaii rarely ever gets that but if you haven't watched invincible now is the time to to sit and watch it. Binge watch season one and two. Don't, yes. <laughs> you don't have to wait six months for the second half of season two. <laughs> man, I was so mad when they did that because we were gripped. Season two started off with a banger. And it just got good, better and better and better and better. And next thing you know, we're like, okay, how come we ain't getting no more updates? And we kept checking and checking. And then we found out, I think it was due to like the actor strike or, or the writer strike or something. Oh, I, I'm not sure exactly what it, I think it was that, but something. It took them six months to give us a new episode, and now it's like within the last two weeks. Now we've caught up, and we're like, "Oh man, it's over, for real." Yeah, it kind of ended too soon after that long break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I guess we might have to go back and watch The Boys. I'm not really looking forward to it. Ah, we ho. But. I'm willing to rewatch all the episodes because it was that good. And the Boys? No, of Invincible. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I was talking about watching The Boys, something to supplement. But I will rewatch Invincible with you. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like they're going to bring back some characters that... We forgot about? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's so easy to forget some characters. Like, there's that one hero that was green, and she died, and then her spouse or significant other was in that group of significant others that are going through hard times and was mad at Debbie. I don't know if anyone remembers this 
guy over here, but I feel like he's yeah, gonna I come forgot. back. Yeah. Like he was mad. Oh, there's that crime boss guy yeah, from the, the ghetto. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, it, <laughs> man, you know it's, it's so crazy. That's another thing too about Invincible. They are not afraid to hurt, maim, or kill their main characters. You will get attached. Boom, dead. Yeah. So this kind of spoiler. When you see the Guardians in the first season, they die and. <laughs> And then, like, some of these characters are related to them come back, and you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but you were attached to the Guardians, <laughs> and they were just brutally killed in front of you. Guts, blood, like, literally. <laughs> Yo, season two went so dirty with it. One of the characters got point blank shot through the from the back of the head half his brains were blown out his arm was cut off and then the rest of his team like you saw one just get brutalized she's like her name is duplicate she got brutalized over and over, over and, and over. over and then you're thinking wait that's the last one gets killed and you're like oh snap it was just nuts because she got obliterated by hand and right before that she duplicated and that duplicate of herself died too. You're like, oh, stop, make it stop. Yeah. So it's just, it's wild. It's wild. Like, this it, is such a good show. I don't think I've seen a show that has kept me engaged start to finish in a while because you're so used to shows having filler or just down periods like it's it's rare to have a show that kicks off at a 10 and goes to like 10 to 15 to 20 to 25 it just keeps going up and up and then I, I can't think of a period where it went down oh i get what you mean with like episodes that were kind of like filler those are usually like character arcs like they're explaining the backstory of certain characters yeah in invincible you don't get that it's happening throughout the season for all characters yeah it doesn't just focus on uh, mark or nolan like everybody is important to the plot like there i don't i don't think we've seen them much in season two but there's like the two uh brilliant monster like guys like like uh the clone dudes the clone dudes you, you just think smart hulk mm -hmm. basically <laughs> but evil but you got them right and you're thinking they're not that important but they play a pivotal role in like robot yes and dimension hopper guy yes but like you're just thinking they're co they're co like comic relief cannon fodder, but no, they're important. It's nuts. Yeah. And so, I have no idea what the next season is going to be about. Mikael said he's going to read ahead. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually going to start using my razor edge tablet and just start reading. I, I've been I've been meaning to like catch up on a lot of my manga. But ever since I broke my iPad, I'm just like, oh, that was my e-reader tablet. I know, that's an expensive e-reader tablet, but you know, there's a lot of things I need to catch up on. You know, I, I need to catch up on my manga, my comics, my, you know, my manwas, my smut. I need to catch up on everything. <laughs> yeah, I read smut. I ain't ashamed of it, you know? Mikhail wanted to do a paw one of the smuts, but I didn't read it yet. Yeah, she didn't. I'm just waiting on her. You know, there's some good smut out there. I mean, you know, minus all the, you know, the, you know, the Netflix and chill, the Disney Plus and, and, you know, I forget. You have to look <laughs> that up. We got to tell this to, you know, I, yeah, I, I, to I, the I gotta, call audience. I got to find that. <laughs> it Hold was on. hilarious. Oh, you know, who said this is too much. So no. basically, all right, so this thing said, all right, so it said, you know, I'm going to say duck because i ain't gonna say the other one so duck netflix and chill i'm trying to hulu and do you amazon prime and i'll make you mine disney plus with magical thrust crunchy roll and take control <laughs> 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 
All righty. <laughs> On that note, where are we going from here? Alright, so if you guys have been watching Invincible, tell us your thoughts on it. We would love to hear about it. And if you haven't, tell us why you haven't watched Invincible because you are missing out. So get Amazon Prime and make that person, you know what. <laughs> <laughs> and get Disney Plus and get the Magical Thrust. <laughs> Country roll and take control. <laughs> On that note, I'm your host, Lehur Superfina. Lehur? Lehua. Lehua. <laughs> oh, I'm your host, Mikhail Casanova. Keep reading manga, keep watching anime, and keep listening to podcasts across worlds. We'll see you on the next one. Ah, uh, uh, ho. Thank you for listening to Podcasts Across Worlds. This is a passion project that was created by Lehua Superfina and is co-hosted by myself, Mikhail Casanova. If you enjoyed this episode and any of the topics that we talk about or any of the guests and voice actors and various people we have on the show, then make sure you do us a solid by if you're watching it on YouTube, which is on youtube.com slash Lehua Superfina then make sure you like the video, share it around with someone you think would enjoy it, as well as leave a comment on what you think could be improved or what you liked, what you didn't like, and all that in between. If you're listening to the show on any of the major podcasting outlets, such as Amazon Music, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or any of the others, then make sure you leave a rating, leave a comment, interact with the polls that we put out, and so much more. If you want to support the show, we do have Patreon, as well as many other methods for supporting. And with that being said, we're signing out. We hope you enjoyed this, and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Keep listening, keep watching, and keep enjoying podcasts across worlds. We'll see you around.